If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to the Social Media Addicts Podcast on the phillytech.org netcast network. Sponsorship provided by Get Flywheel, optimized WordPress hosting at getflywheel.com, wistia.com at wistia.com, and Zoho Mail. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 19 of We're Almost at 20 of the Social Media Addicts Podcast. I'm Seth. That's Howard. Hey, hey it's me this week. Exactly. And I think Jody is galvanizing around the Westminster um, dog show right now. So yeah, well, Westminster Cat Club, big dog show. And uh, I saw earlier today that uh, she and Jewel are making some progress, which is great. It's wonderful. And, you know, so they're, they're doing good out there. So it's wonderful. So we cheer them on. Rah, rah, rah. Uh, anyhow, so anyhow, we want to thank everybody who has supported us on patreon.com slash phillytechorg. Um, Howard being one of them, our biggest donor. I, I love that privilege of being the large donor, but uh, hopefully someone will supplant me on that. Yes. <laughs> I bow to, I bow to you, I bow to you. Anyhow, um, so go to patreon.com slash phillytechorg. Donate what you can monthly. We appreciate it. So, Anyhow, we have three sponsors this week, Wistia, Flywheel, and Zoho Mail. So stay tuned. We'll talk about them without, within the show. Shall we get started, Howard? We shall. Let us start. So do you use Pinterest? Uh, a little bit. It's not my thing. Pinterest has never been ah, the man. place that I love, but I like it. And um, so what's going on with Pinterest? So a lot of people were using affiliate links, and when people were clicking and buying through those links, through those pictures that had affiliate links behind it, they were making money. And people were making a good amount of money through Pinterest. Pinterest is now trying to monetize their own, monetize their network, and they're saying no more affiliate links. No more affiliate links. You put an affiliate link up, we're stripping it, we're getting rid of it, and it's just going to be a link. Sorry, guys, your monetization on our platform is now dead. Well, this one, and it's funny because the uh, story that comes with it is whether or not um, if, if they didn't do it, the FTC may have gone after Pinterest. This is a really interesting thing because if you think about a site called Pinterest and what you say is, oh, when someone sees a link, we don't know where that link goes. Well, the, so that when you see a link, it doesn't label itself as this might link to a product. Now... Let's take the word Pinterest out. Let's pretend like Pinterest doesn't exist, and let's put another website in there that takes you to a link. Let's call it Google or Facebook or any website that links to something. And let's understand that on Google, when you click on a link in the organic search, you don't expect that to go to an affiliate affiliate sale or anything, like you're going to a link. Now the links to mm -hmm. affiliate products or to things, they go where you buy things and same thing on Facebook. Someone posts something on Facebook and it just takes you there. It doesn't say sponsored. So I don't think Pinterest was going to have a problem. So when we're talking about whether or not the FTC was going to go after Pinterest, I think that Pinterest had a really easy case to say, well, if you're going to go after us, you have to go after the entire web. Because links are links, and whether they're an affiliate link or not, it is what it is. Now, that said, if Pinterest came out and said, um, yeah, we're going to put our own affiliate links into your Amazon links, okay, that's going to piss a lot of people off, which is kind of yes. what they're doing. So I'm totally, the funny thing is, I'm totally good for Pinterest to say to me, we're going to put our own affiliate links in there. Now, I might as a marketer say, well, phew, I'm not going to use your platform anymore because I can't make money on it. But and they'll the say, thing. so long. Yeah, and they'll <laughs> say, so long. But here's the thing. Why did Pinterest get popular? 
because people could create collections of links, interesting things, interesting products, whether they were uh, products, services, affiliate links, things you could buy, um, Etsy items. These were things where people were posting it and it didn't say sponsored, it didn't say ad, it didn't say affiliate. I think if Pinterest had done the following, hey, if we look at a link and we think there's an affiliate code attached to it because we're seeing this link 15 or 1500 different ways, each with its own little tag on it, what we're going to do is we're going to let the Pinterest person have that, but we're going to mark it with affiliate sales. If they did that, they'd piss some people off because they're like, hey, what about that? But you know what? People would still use it because not everyone sees that. The same reason why you can mark something as sponsored on Facebook or Google and people will still click on it. So mm -hmm. I kind of, I see what Pinterest is doing. Um, I'm scared that they set a precedent for other apps by saying, oh, we're trying to avoid legal things or no, it wasn't for the money. Um, I think they could have found their way through this because the web works this way. You know, someone puts up a website and puts a link to an Amazon store. I think that's totally fine. There are tons and tons of artists who the way that you support them is you go to their Amazon affiliates link and you buy stuff. And you know what? It doesn't say, hey, when you click on this link, the rest of your purchases are going to be included too. That's just the way Amazon affiliates work. So kind of let the web do its thing. Yeah, we're talking about the government and we're talking about Pinterest. And, right. and, you know, if Pinterest doesn't do it, the government might come in and say, you can't do this. I mean, there was a huge big rigmarole that happened, you know, what was it, two or three years ago with bloggers and the FTC. Um, it's government oversight. It's going to happen. And they're going to say, look, you can't mislead people. You have to say sponsored after this. Well, because, and the for, for example, we just posted um, um, Rick um, Knudsen from Flywheel was my guest on the most recent interview show podcast. I, I at the bottom wrote in big bold letters, Flywheel is the sponsor of the flytech.org netcast network, saying like, that you are a sponsor. You know? Well, and there's a big difference between I'm linking to a product and a sponsor. So when you're a blogger, mm -hmm. if you don't disclose that you are getting paid to talk about a story, that is a, there's a journalism and ethics that's sort of built mm -hmm. in like, hey, I got compensated to review this. Um, people would send me products to look at and I would say to them, look, I'm either going to review it or not. If I write about it, I will let you know, but you're getting it back. So if someone said, how did you get this product? I would say, it was provided to me and they're getting it back. That was always disclosed and those are regulations for that. That's yes, very different. It gets sticky because oftentimes I have the selfie stick. They just right. came to me now and they said, please, please, return, please don't return it. Like, it's not worth. It's not worth sending back to us. Like it's right. Two pieces here, and it's like keep it. I'm like, okay. okay. This, is, this is in my desk, and I, you know, I've used it twice. You know, I, I've I still get to review it. You know, but when I review it, I will you know probably you know give it to my cousin or my niece or somebody who uses it. You know, I'm like whatever. I we used to I used to write that. for this magazine, and so I got products. And what we did was, anytime the uh, manufacturer said don't send it back or they didn't provide a mechanism, we gave it away to a reader. The idea was, I'm not getting compensated other than I'm getting something to try. So Verizon would send me a cell phone, I'd play with it for a couple weeks, and then ship it right back to them. And then whether or not I was going to write a review, I'd often comment to them saying, "This is a phone I want to look at. Can I get Can I get a loaner for that for the review?" Um, but if you know, people would send me headphones and weird things. They all got given away to readers because if I had started taking those products, then the reviews are in question, and that's where the FTC was really adamant mm -hmm. about the mommy bloggers taking on the products. I don't think Pinterest is suffering from this because when someone pins something, the pins take you to products. Half the pins are it's you like have to literally know, you, you say even if they're not affiliate links, there's right. products. Exactly. And if you go to that product that's on an Etsy store and you buy it, presumably there's something there. I actually really would love it if Pinterest said, this is an affiliate link. Or if when you pinned it, you had the option to say, this is an affiliate. You be, you're above board about it. Because maybe if you try to fool Pinterest, Pinterest will strip it out. But if you admit to it, Pinterest will say affiliate link. Do something that lets the web evolve and do it naturally as opposed to heavy-handed giving users an expectation and then changing that expectation 
um, in a really drastic way because there's going to be a ton of marketers who I think are just going to bail on Pinterest because of that. Yeah, because um, it does generate a ton of traffic and money. I also think with Pinterest, I mean, they're trying to monetize it. Monetize it. Why don't they start up an ad ad network? So if you want to advertise, we're taking a cut because it's our network. So, but you can still make money on our. You can still make money, but you have to go do it our way. Yeah. Because well, they should come platform. up with something. Yeah. And, and they're trying to with with um, promoted pins and whatnot. So we'll see. Anyhow, yeah, what's going on with Facebook and death? Uh, Facebook and death. So Facebook in the uh, past couple weeks has basically released a new way to handle when what, what happens to someone's profile when they die. Um, this is something that I went through with my father three, so three and a half years ago. Um, he was an active Facebook user. I actually, since I was the executor of his estate, I also had access to his passwords. So I was able to log into his account and notify people and do certain things. Um, and I also went through the process of memorializing his account, which I had to send them a death certificate and a link to an obituary online. There was a the process that I had to go through, and it was a little bit of a pain. Um, because I was the executor of his estate, that was relatively... I didn't get any friction from Facebook other than, you need to send us this. I sent it to them. Very quickly, it was done. It was really done within about a week. So it That's wasn't... awesome that they it, did that. Yeah, it, it, wasn't a hard, it wasn't a hard thing to do. It wasn't like, for six months, I couldn't do anything. It was, it was done relatively quickly. Um, that said, the new things that they want to do, I think are... They're really good. They're, I, I think they're doing it the right way. Um, they're making it a little bit hard, but not too hard. Um, one of the things is you only get to choose one person as what's called your legacy contact. I wish there was two. Because what if you're in the same I, yeah, I wish there was a backup. Um, if you don't have a legacy contact. Life insurance. Even in life insurance, you have a backup. Yeah, and that's something where they will probably adjust that. Um, because here's what I want to avoid. Let's say my legacy contact is my spouse, is my wife, and her legacy contact is me. If we die in a terrible auto accident and we Not both die life. together, now you have two accounts that can't be accessed because neither of us, neither legacy contact is available. So, <laughs> no. well, that's what I'm saying that you're both dead. Right, but the <laughs> idea is, is Facebook going to treat it as the... Um, whoever the next heir is, are they going to automatically default to that? So by default, our, our daughters would All right, sort of fill in that role. So uh, without getting too morbid. Anyway, I really think it's good. Um, and once that information is confirmed, you can do things like um, you, can, you can't delete anything and you don't have access to their private messages. Which is so that's funny. something which I think is really good because um, whether or not you were doing things, the goal isn't to go through and completely obliterate someone's account or change things. What you basically can do is you can hide stuff that shouldn't be there. Um, the uh, the account freezes their connections, so you can't they can't get new friends. And then you can do things like whether or not you want to let people still write on their wall. Um, for my father, I wanted people to still be able to write on his wall and comment and things like that because it's just his existing friends. Um, and people have done things. They, I still do see things where a friend of his posts, oh, I just went for a great run, and out on the run I was thinking of you. It's really, really nice because all of his friends and family see that on my dad's mm -hmm. wall, even That's though true. he passed away three and a half years ago. Um, the one thing that I couldn't do was post as if, not so much as if I was him, but to do what they have now added, which is kind of like a memorialized, sort of like a pinned post at the top of his uh, profile. It says it could say something like, you know, in my for my father, Ira Yermish passed away on July twenty third, twenty eleven. Um, if you, you know, thanks to all of his friends and families, services were here. If you'd like to make a donation in his memory, these are the ca charities that he uh, could really liked. That I'd like it if I could do that on his post. So I actually already sent an email to Facebook to say, hey, can I retroactively get that option on my dad's account? Because I am his legacy contact, we did that whole process. Um, I'm just wondering because it would be nice to do that, um, and some of it is just to see how that works um, without having to have anybody else. Do you think they're gonna let you do it? Hmm? Do you think they're gonna let you do it? I don't know. I haven't heard back yet. My guess is, huh. um, and this is something that you saw in a lot of the media, lots of people saying, "Can you do that for us?" Yeah, so, like, oh boy, oh boy, like because it's probably I don't want to say millions of people, but you know. Facebook's been billion. around for 11 years. And there's and, a billion people on Facebook now? Oh, yeah. More than that even, 1.3 billion? And, and there's a significant percentage of people who've died. So 
if this comes up, they probably have a lot of customer service emails to go through. So, Don't envy that person or people or department exactly. or region. <laughs> Anyhow, urgently is our next topic. Urgently is wait, essentially wait, Uber. Wait, go back. Oh, go back. Oh, go back. I mean, messed up something? Yeah, sponsor. Oh, we forgot our sponsor. Oh, no. <laughs> no, we can't forget our sponsor. We can't forget our sponsor, especially Wistia. Tell us so, about Wistia. Oh, before that, let me, let's try to do the screencast. All right, so why don't you screencast? This is a brave, brave new world. We're trying to um, up the production ability. So while Seth is screencasting... All right, to everyone. All right we're screencasting. All right, I want to let you know that today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia here at phillytech.org because it's much more professional than YouTube, and the data Wistia provides helps us understand exactly how our content is being consumed. And best of all, Wistia has a ton of free resources on their site to help those of us just getting started with video and professionals. They have tutorials on lighting, editing, choosing the right microphone, and an entire community dedicated to helping each other improve their videos. And did I mention they have a free version of their service that can hold up to 50 videos? So go check them out. It's wistia.com. That's wistia.com. The product is awesome, the resources are helpful, and most importantly, the team over there is full of genuinely good people. So thanks again to Wistia for sponsoring phillytech.org and the Social Media Addicts podcast. We got a little guy dancing there. <laughs> All right, on to Urgently. I had to put that one in there, that was pretty funny. That was awesome. That was awesome. Hopefully that worked out well. Hopefully everyone get to see that. So, anyhow, on to urgently. Urgently is essentially Uber for when you break down. So everyone knows that you know AAA, at least in the states, AAA has a racket on. You know, you sign up for a year and you might or might not use them. This is urgently is supplanting that, for lack of a better word, saying, pay us when you need us, not because you might need us. So it's a neat concept. It's urgent.ly, and I think I would use it. I'm actually going to download it, but of course I pay for AAA, so I'm like, I already paid for another year, so I'm like, I'm kind of in that racket right now, so I'm kind of stuck. What, would you use this, Howard? Well, I am also a AAA member, and because we keep our cars a long time, we tend to use it. We have lots of <laughs> cases where it's batteries and things like that. And I think about the number of times over the years. And if I were to simply take um, for the you know for my wife and I, we have the two we have two cars, and we actually have the AAA plus because I wanted to get the extended towing. Um, so it ends up being like 150 bucks a year uh, uh, for us, and it's not a bad deal if we use it twice a year. If you don't use it twice a year, then urgently is a much better deal because in a per incident sense, it's not as expensive as AAA. But so if you ha I look at it this way, if you are one person and you have a relatively new car that's very reliable, then yeah, urgently is probably a great choice for you. Um, the funny thing is, if you look at it, the people that are signing up for urgently are the same tow truck drivers that sign up for AAA. So you're not going to get much difference in service. What you're going to get is a difference in how you pay for it and potentially the perceived access. Because I think the tow truck drivers are still going to um, preference AAA riders, so to speak, over urgently until urgently makes a big enough dent that they mm -hmm. start saying, well, we're not available at AAA. We're going to take a little longer. Because it's going to be the, the People aren't magically going to get trucks to ch start charging batteries because urgently exists. You're still going to need your local tire service centers to be signed up for this. Absolutely. I think it's, I think it's neat. It's neat to see these startups kind of finding a problem or seeing an existing service and then improving upon it. So. Well, and I like that they flip it on its head. They say AAA is all about membership and AAA makes money because you don't use it. Urgently is all about you know instant access convenience when you only when you need it. So yeah, you pay a price premium. Except if you never need it, it's there for you waiting, and it's not you know it's not billing you when you're not using it. Absolutely. <laughs> and awkward silence. 
awkward uh-huh. moment. I actually looked at the clock. It's 10.01 when we're recording this, which is an awkward moment. Exactly. And, you know, Snapchat is trying to try our stories for locals only. Behind the scenes or inside of the exclusive content is... What? That's my notes. Stop reading my notes to myself. <laughs> all right, Howard. What all right, is this so, story about Snapchat? All right, so here's this story about Snapchat. This is a pretty great story. Um, don't take my notes away the moment I'm about to read them. Oh, my God. This is the <laughs> downside of working with a Google Doc that is live. I have to put a little note there that says, this is Howard's notes. Leave it alone. Yeah. So when I read this story about what Snapchat is doing, think about it this way. Um, Take the concept of here is content that is only for a select audience, sort of a behind the scenes, and then add local. So if you're not, if the story is happening about someone who's in Los Angeles, if it's a band and they're in LA and they want behind the scenes content, they can now take those our stories that would normally be sort of for, I don't want to say everybody, but they can um, uh, GPS lock it to a region. So if you're not in L.A., close to those stories, you can't access them either. So even though I might be following behind the scenes, they're giving behind the scenes access just for a location as well. It's an interesting combination. It's like insider exclusive content for this thing at this place. Um, Super duper local. Uh, Again, it's another way to make Snapchat a little bit more interesting, a little bit more compelling. Hey, when it shows up in Snapchat... I want to make sure that it is super relevant and super bit and super for me. So on one hand, it's another it's another way to make the content more and more exclusive, more limited audience. So that means as an end user, when I get a notification on Snapchat about a snap, it's almost saying we're making sure we're not going to give you so much stuff that you ignore it. Snapchat doesn't want to have information overload the moment they start getting snaps from different people. So this is a way to control the amount of information so we don't get overloaded and to keep it very relevant to me because it's my city, it's my content. Uh, it's pretty great. I, I'm actually on the fence about reinstalling Snapchat and giving it another whirl because the first time through, I just felt creepy. <laughs> wow. Yes, exactly. Thank you for the gong. That's all I'm going to say to that. It's, gonna, I, 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 it's interesting, and I think Snapchat is trying to reinvent itself and figure out new ways for it to u- be used, and this is definitely an interesting use case for it. So shall we thank our next sponsor? We shall. So, and again, brave new world. Our next sponsor on phillytech.org is Flywheel. And what is Flywheel? Well, Flywheel is a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers, creative agencies. Flywheel makes it simple to build, launch, and manage client sites with its easy-to-use dashboard built from the ground up for the modern web designer. They have nightly backups, fast load times, and WordPress-specific security, and an awesome support team full of WordPress developers. Flywheel helps thousands of designers across the world launch their WordPress projects every day. So if you do WordPress, Flywheel Manage WordPress Hosting, go to getflywheel.com and check it out. Take a look. And please use our link. Use our link. Definitely use our link on phillytech.org to get to Flywheel so they know that it is us sending you. Absolutely. I personally actually I use them for my, for my clients' websites, and they are incredible. I was mucking around in the back end today, and I screwed something up. They fixed it for me. They went back a few days, back in the server logs, and figured out what I did wrong, and they moved the site around and fixed it for me. They saved me. So also check out the interview show this week. Um, I posted it yesterday. We I was interviewing Rick and Newson, who was a co-founder of a flywheel. So, very interesting interview. Unfortunately, the audio, the video didn't turn out too well, so it's, a, it's audio video, meaning that it's a picture of him, you know, the, right. the out bar, and then it's just the audio below it. I have a few of those it, it, videos that are just kind of, the, audio, the video didn't t- quite turn out, but the audio is just fine. Well, the video didn't you know, turn out sometimes, the audio. It, sometimes in the interview, the best thing that you get is not to look at us ugly people, so. Exactly. And then, but there's sometimes, you know, I've been disappointed because the person is actually quite attractive and I figured exactly. it would be, But it still didn't work out because they were using an iPhone. And I learned that the other day that if you use your phone for, like, Skype, do an interview, make sure it's horizontal. Otherwise, yeah. the thing's going to freak out and go, 
Yeah, it's crazy. So, anyhow, anyhow, Howard, do you use Foursquare? I used to be a religious Foursquare check-in guy. I was one of those guys who was using the app very, very early. I was the mayor of lots of places. I had lots of points. And at a certain point, I just went, I'm done. And I checked in. I, for, I actually was going to look. What was my last place that I checked in on Foursquare? Because I just started looking at it going, I didn't feel like I was helping anyone with the check-ins. Like it wasn't making, yeah, it was a sad trombone on that. I, I couldn't figure out what my checking in was doing for the greater collective good. It was just like, oh, I'm over here. So they've gone through some iterations. They went through a whole iteration with, well, we'll, you, we'll split the app up, and so check-ins will be in the new app Swarm, and the location data will be in the Foursquare app. So it's sort of interesting now that they're really moving away from check-ins. It was almost like check-ins were a way to get data. So, Absolutely. you know, as opposed to a scoring game ag algorithm, look how much I can go places. Exactly. And the, I mean, the mayorships, I don't think the Swarm even has mayorships anymore. Well, I, I don't know. I don't use it anymore. Yeah. I, it's, been, you know, me, swarm. it's been a couple years. Four, I just... Foursquare is an interesting app now. It, it really is in, interesting to find the data and learn about different places and review places that you went to. It's almost like a Yelp competitor completely now. It, well, swarm, it's exactly is, like that. And Swarm's fun to check in on. I mean, I, I'll check in cause time hop. I like to go like, if it's, if it's, like I went, I, my wife and I went on a date date day on Monday, which is yes, which was yesterday. I said the yeah, interview Monday show was yesterday. yesterday. The interview show went out today. I have to take that back. But the, but um, the date day was yesterday, and I checked in the movie theater. I just, and I checked in at you know at Harvest, which is a great place. Check it out. It's in Montgomeryville. Harvest mm -hmm. Harvest seasonal grow. Awesome food. A little pricey, but good. Um, but I checked in there, and this was in a year, two years from now. I said, "Oh, that, there's our date day." That was that was nice to remember. Yeah, and Time Hop is a great app for that. That should be my pick for this week. Time Hop. Time Hop. The, time Hop. Do you use Time I, Hop? I don't know if I'm. I don't use Time Hop, but for no reason other than I just don't use it. There's no like malice or didn't like it. I just don't use it. Um, that said, I look back at Foursquare. The fact that you can look at its data without an account. Well, that's just like what Yelp did. You can mm -hmm. look at Yelp reviews. You can look at this information. You don't need an account. That's more compelling if you're thinking about, hey, I want people who own these places to advertise. And mm -hmm. I want people accessing the data without having to sign in because then I can show the ads and specials. Bang. Exactly. Um, so I think it's a great move for them. Is it going to get me back to Foursquare? Probably not, um, because I'm still a jilted lover, wondering why I checked in so many different places. Um, I think about the number of times I would go, I've got to check in here, and I watch people literally drive by places, and every five minutes they're checking in at the next place, and I'm just going, that is not the way it's supposed to be done. Or they're checking in or toll plazas, like crossing the Delaware yeah. River. Like, you don't want to be I'm on a bridge. Too. Yay, I'm on I'm a bridge. On a bridge. So, uh-oh, we let Seth loose with the sound effects app. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm using them correctly, though, so... Moving right along. Along. <laughs> Moving <laughs> right along. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. So, anyhow, Facebook is now talking about the relevant score of, for ads on Facebook. So, that what they're doing is they're actually letting you see what your score for your ad is and what... And what if if you're going to rank well on Facebook? Um, do you, have you used the ad platform at all, Howard, on Facebook? Yes, I have. I've used it for myself, and I've used it for clients. And and again, the challenge is always how do you make an ad that is going to convert well? How do you make an ad that fits the audience? So the more data we can get back that says this ad really doesn't match the audience that you're going for, that's going to make it more expensive. So we're going to try to make sure that if our um, Oh, there he goes. If our ads are more relevant, theoretically, we lower our cost. But what that does is that actually improves the quality of the ad for the audience that it's targeting mm -hmm. by simply saying, look, we'll charge you less if you make a more relevant ad. Because the more, if it costs more to make irrelevant ads and getting to people that way, it should. So I actually think that's a great innovation and good that they show advertisers what they're working with. So it gives us some feedback 
on uh, improving things. Absolutely, I think that um, let me turn. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I I think that um, Facebook doing this is actually taking a cue from Google. Definitely. And I think that by doing that, they're actually. I mean, if they give, if you give me a relevant ad, that I think that you think is going to be beneficial to me, I'm actually buy that service. I may actually use that service. I have nothing against ads if they're cool products. I found out about Falcon Social through that. I never actually used them. But I, I now know about them and might use them in the future because of a Facebook ad. And it, that was relevant. So, anyhow, what's going on with Ithaca? Um, this is one of those cases where my social media will talk to your social media. But this was from Boards of Tourism. So, what they basically did for the, uh, the they took a very fun approach. The Visitors Bureau in Ithaca put up a little thing up there that just said um, instead of uh, or what do they put due to this ridiculously stupid winter Ithaca invites you to visit the so please come back when things thaw out really it's for the birds here now which I thought was great because not only did they do that which showed a great sense of humor but then the Florida Keys sort of responded and said well uh, you know they're doing it for us and uh, I just think that's really great to see, you know, in all honesty, we know we're not going to visit Ithaca in the winter. I went to school in Rochester, wanna... New York, and you don't want to go there. Unless you want to go skiing or something, but that's in the Adirondacks, you know. You don't it, wanna go... It's the kind of thing where, as beautiful as it is and the amount of snow, you just can't get there. So you think about the Board of Tourism and you think about the convention centers and you're just like, you know what, we want to go to the Florida Keys. If you have a sense of humor about those things, I think they got much more social bang for doing that than by simply saying, hey, the snow's not so bad, you should come anyway. Yeah, so, they said, they said that's, you know, again. Yeah. They said, that's it, we surrender, go to Key West instead. <laughs> Exactly. But they got so much more press. Absolutely. And that press from links from USA Today, all this stuff boosted huge, huge way because they had a sense. No. Absolutely. All right, shall we thank our last sponsor? Now we're going to really get um, high tech here. And we're actually going to try. high tech now. We're this is definitely a trial. A trial. We're going to try and share our video. Of Howard's um, video ad for Zoho Mail. So let's let it rip. PhillyTech.org would like to thank our sponsor, Zoho Mail, professional email designed for your business with business class features and security, as well as the convenience of the web and mobile. Learn more about Zoho Mail and sign up for a free ad free account for up to 10 users by clicking on our link in the show notes. Back, I hope. Oh my God! If that worked, that will be amazing. Yes, That'll be amazing. I, I didn't figure if I hit the word back. Oh, I could have done better. I could have done one better. Oh, well, I'll learn for next time. What was the one better? What did you need to do? I could, I could, I could retract the playlist, make it full full screen. Oh, oh, it's all right. We live and learn. This is this is learning live. This learning is... live with Seth and Howard. Exactly. The idea is we want to up the quality of the network in all ways, shapes, or forms and do a better job for our advertisers, really get them uh, great ad reads, great sponsorship, good links. Uh, we'll have links in the show notes, which is what we want you to click on because when you click on our links, they know not just, hey, I went to zoho.com slash mail. I went to zoho.com slash mail slash question mark, blah, 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 blah link from phillytech.org. Yes. That lets them know that we actually are helping them out. So please go to phillytech.org and click on our sponsor links there and not on uh, just by typing it in because you happen to type it. Or Googling it. Don't Google it. No, don't Google it. Anyhow, Howard, what what's your pick for the week? Okay, so my pick for the week, my pick is... Uh, I'm going wait, to... Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. What am I waiting for? My pick is Google Forms. Now, you know what? The interesting thing about Google Forms is I've seen them pop up, and the first time I experienced Google Forms, they were relatively simple. You were basically getting a limited number of questions that went into an Excel spreadsheet. Well, Google Forms has really grown up. It is a very mature product. You actually have um, a full survey platform, so if you had been sending things with 
um, uh, SurveyMonkey or some of these other services that advertised or limited the kind the number of questions that you could do. Google Forms is a great option to take things like event registrations or polls or emails or pop quizzes, all kinds of stuff that you can do. The forms look great. Um, I typically on a website, I will use a particular WordPress component, but these forms are pretty great and I know that um, now when I have people who say to me, hey, I'm trying to do forms, I don't have to say to them, oh, well, let's get something installed on your WordPress website. I can just say, you know what, let's put up some Google Forms and link to it, and you're good to go. It's another less expensive option, less expensive as in free, free, uh, not even free 99, it's just Google free, um, giving it away. You can have people collaborate on it the same way you would collaborate on Docs. Google Forms, pretty, pretty great. Um, you can even do things by, like, limiting, um, or excuse me, you, you can do things with forms that are just, pretty awesome um, and they can respond in their Gmail without even having to go to the form it's pretty great that's awesome and in in that whole idea of Google Forms my pick is actually a project that I'm doing with happy about actually think aha but that it's a form it's a version of happy about publishers Alan Cupertino I am compiling a social media customer service tip book um, essentially it is the do's and don'ts of so social customer service so if you go to s3th.me, so Seth, but the E is the three. So s3th.me slash soc, c-u-s-t, s-e-r-v, it'll, it'll be in the show notes. You don't have to worry about writing this down right now. <laughs> it's not exactly a very good short URL. Um, go there, it's a Google form, and it asks you pretty much for your tip, your, your Twitter handle, and your name, an email address. And if we choose to use it, I need 140 of these tips and I will put them in a notebook, you'll get credit for them under the tip and we're, I'm going to crowdsource this book and then we're going to put it out there for everyone to see and quote from and use and be happy about. No pun intended. <laughs> so check it out, it's s3th.me slash soc, so soc cost serve. Nice. So check it out. Anyhow, Howard, this has been a pleasure. Hopefully, As Joel always. Is, hopefully Joel and Jody are now the new champions of the Westminster Dog Show. That is the goal. We wish them luck with their progress, but uh, I know it's probably a pretty amazing experience, and hopefully we will hear all about it on next week's episode, which is episode what number is next week? Ready for it? Oh, not the sound effects. I... 20. <laughs> episode 20. But that's next week. Oh. So I think next week might need to be a liquid Tuesday night. So rather than the usual tea, it might need to include a little, uh, I don't want to say champagne, but uh, 20 is a big round number. It's not 100. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see, wait for 100 or 50, but 20 is a good first one to have a little celebration on. Um, are there any other podcasts on phillytech.org that have hit 20 yet? Um... Well, not officially, but the interview shows, I think, like 35. I just, they haven't all aired okay. yet. <laughs> They're not all aired, but you've got them more, You've got them going. So I, 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 I is... backlog them, so if you couldn't tell, yeah. I, I try and keep them kind of ambiguous to the time frame. But if you listen carefully, you can usually hear when I put one out of order and I put one that happened later, earlier, and then there's one that's one, not quite on my game later. Like, like the flywheel one was done relatively early in the shows. But he kept on getting bumped back because he was a sponsor podcast. You know, the interview, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of Flywheel, but I pushed it back because I had to put some, you know, other ones in before it. Sorry, yeah. Rick, the truth comes out. But um, but you can usually tell which, you know, they're out of order or whatnot. But, you know, just check out the interview show if you're at it. That's, you know, phillytech.org slash inter the interview show with dashes between the words. So... Just All go right, to phillytech.org and uh, click on the shows link and yeah, see so how, different shows. So, Howard, where can they find you online? Well, simple way is just go to howardyermish.com, and everything you need to get to is on that site, everything from my Twitter account to Facebook page, things like that. And um, I will, uh, I don't want to say pimp a product, but I'm doing a LinkedIn workshop a week Ooh. from Thursday at night at 8 o'clock. <laughs> I, I usually do them as lunchtime. Uh, this afternoon, I actually did one in the afternoon, uh, which was strange because it was a West Coast time, a West Coast lunch. But um, 
next Thursday, which I believe is the 26th at 8 p.m. Again, if you go to howardyermers.com, you'll see a big old link that says webinar. It is free. It's about LinkedIn, and I would love for people to join us on that. We will have the, the link in the show notes as well. We'll put, let Howard pimp it out, and that's Howard, spelled like Howard, and Yermish, spelled like Yermish, which is, if you don't know how to spell Yermish, it's the Y-E-R-M-I-S-H, so howardyermish.com, and you can find him on the Twitter at hyermish, not Howard Yermish, hyermish.com. No, hyermish, it's late. It's and late. Howard, you can find me at sethgoldstein.me, find me at phillytech.org, um, find me all over the web as at Seth Goldstein. I'm not at Seth. That's the more famous version of the man. Seth he's, Godin. No, that's actually Seth Goldstein. But he's he's a tech entrepreneur out in the, out in the valley. So, Oh, that's I, right. I get, it's not Seth Godin. No, I get his tweets. He gets my tweets. And I'm constantly forwarding him, forwarding him my, forwarding tweets to him that people send to me. It's humorous. It, 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 I never thought that would ever happen to me where someone would get me mixed up, but it happens. Well, you know what? There are worse things to happen in the world. Yes, and there and I am part of a um, stealth startup, so stay tuned for more information on that. But if you want to sign up for more information, go to getmsl.net, and great things are going to happen over there. Um, picture special. It's a, it's a um, four square for special needs. Oh, very nice special needs community. So check it out. Sign up for the sign up for the. Um, the newsletter, and we'll announce it when it goes live, probably in the next few months. All right, guys, I think we've yacked long enough. Yes, we did. We, we even yacked you. about finishing the episode. We did. <laughs> and about other episodes, too. Exactly. Very meta. Ooh. So episode 19 is wrapped. So awesome. Can. All right, guys, take care. Good night.